we just got some crazy news for Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and we're going to be going over all the new characters coming to the game. We have some new gameplay showcase for both Twayan and Sophon, as well as the Primarch Sandalphon, and some crazy new features that are going to be added to the game, such as the ability to combine different sigils to make a special new one. There's a lot to go through, so without any further ado, let's get into it. The stream started by showcasing the character usage ranking for both the main story and the quests. With the Captain, Jita and Gran ranking number 1 and 2 for main story, but of course Rackham, Narmaya and Eugen are up there for quests because people were AFK farming and farming for a lot of slimes. We also get this fun statistic which is the first unlock crewmates ranking with Narmaya being number 1, not surprising, followed up by Cagliostro and Zeta, two more fan favorite characters. And they also go on to mention that the male characters were not that popular, with the females taking the top of the rankings. They also showcase the rarest trophies in the game that can be obtained, with the rarest trophy being the hardcore one which requires completing all chapters on the ultimate difficulty three times. I personally haven't replayed through the story yet, but I do want to point out that the 4th and the 5th trophies that are here on the list are related to Gendagosa because he is simply the least popular character in the game, and they're actually quite easy such as this one where you have to defeat the Angra Manu in Maniac 3 times as Gendagosa. We also got some data for the completion rate of the Lucilius raid, with over 15% of the game population having beaten Lucilius, and only 2.7% having beaten it within 10 minutes without going into critical condition or using Using any items. And let's be honest, most of us that did this were likely using the Lancelot build that I made a video on, but props to the ones that did that without it. We also got the rankings for the fully uncapped Terminus weapons, and of course Narmaya is number 1, and again she's followed by Zeta and Cagliostro. And wouldn't you guess it, it's the same thing for the Mastery Unlock. Hmm, I wonder why that is the case. We also got to see an equipped skills ranking by characters, so you guys can see the different rankings for each of the different characters. I think it's cool that the developers showcase these statistics, it's something that I hope to see more developers do in the future. But then we move on to the big 1.20 update news. With a big focus being of course Twayan and Sophon, the two characters that are becoming playable as of tomorrow. And as you're about to see, they do give us a full showcase of how these characters are going to work. And let's start with Sofan which looks amazing here, and just look at that idle animation, that's so sick. And here we are in the practice range and we're going to see just exactly how this character works. So by performing combo finishers as you can see Sofan is going to increase his avatar gauge. And his combo strings look very cool, and as you can see right here, he's able to summon his avatar gaining a completely different form, and that avatar allows him to follow up and do more damage with these combos. That and these combos look amazing. So his playstyle is going to be somewhat similar to that of Catalina, where you're trying to build up his gauge to be able to perform these powerful combos. So of course, in the skill section we're going to be seeing skills that are going to help you do that a lot more easily. And man, just look at the effects on the cape and the avatar, just the way everything looks, that is so sick. And of course, by performing link attacks, you'll also be able to do it. With the skill Infinito Creare, he's able to perform this big AoE attack from a distance that deals a lot of damage with multi-hit attacks. And of course, he's also got a gap closer of his own that allows him to follow up with these powerful combos. And just like we predicted, Sofon is also going to have a buff that is going to raise his attack and crit rate, but it will also instantly max out the avatar gauge, so that is for sure going to be a tool that you're going to want to use on Sofon to be able to max out his damage output. Ah, oh, just look at all of those animations, that looks so sick. As they say, even if you are just messing around, it just looks so cool and fun to play. And next up is the 7 star brilliance, the skill that we saw in one of the trailers where he summons all of these avatars, it takes a long time to charge, but once he finishes charging up that animation, he's going to instantly fill up his SBA gauge, which is absolutely nuts. This is something that I also predicted in my Sofon video as it is a mechanic in the actual Grand Blue Fantasy mobile game. And here we have his Skybound art which also looks fantastic. Just look at that black hole effect with the avatar attacking at the same time, just beautiful. And of course I don't need to tell you why being able to instantly cap your SBA gauge is such a big deal in this game, this character is going to be busted. And next up we have Twayan, the bow character that is capable of floating and attacking from a distance and utilizes a lot of debuffs. And given how important these debuffs are in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, I expected this character to be very very powerful. So let's take a look at some of her combos and skills. 
So this is her normal attack combo. As you can see, she does a series of ranged attacks. And as you can see, she is very mobile, being able to move very easily as she does damage, so you'll be able to kite the enemies. And she's even able to dash around, go up into the air. And as you can see, she's able to level up her gauge. So that is the ultra side level, that is the name of her gauge. And as she does her combos, the number is going to raise up. So as she is going to finish up that combo, we get to the level 3. And the higher level you are, the more arrows you'll be able to fire, which means that you'll be able to dish out a lot more damage. You'll be able to raise this gauge up to level 10, at which point you'll be able to fire off all of those arrows at once with the multi-lock hail, which is one of her skills. And as the developers say, she'll be able to target multiple enemies with that skill, which is going to be very good for a lot of boss fights where you need to target several mobs. She also counts with a buff, which is called Merculite, which grants Twayan attack up, as well as Mirror Image, one of the best defensive buffs in the entire game. And then there is the Depravity skill, which is absolutely nuts. By holding down the button, Twayan is able to fire off all of these arrows at once, which are going to unload a lot of debuffs on the enemy. And then there is Clincher, a skill that we saw that Wayne has also in the mobile game. She's able to deal a lot of damage with a powerful single shot that is going to deal more damage the more debuffs the enemy has. So again, it goes back to the same playstyle where Twayan is going to be a character that is capable of attacking the enemy non-stop, applying debuffs all the time, and extending their duration, and then finishing off with Clinch to deal more damage. And now we have Twayan's beautiful Skybound art, we get this amazing cinematic with the galaxy in the background, she gets these wings, and she fires off that series of arrows, dealing a lot of damage and looking amazing in the process, very similar to one of her splash arts from the mobile game if you guys actually played it. And very importantly, after she casts the Skybound art, Twayan is going to get a buff that is going to make it so that all of her skills are going to become empowered and she will now apply paralysis on all of them. And with how powerful paralysis is in this game being able to incapacitate an enemy for a very long time, she is going to be absolutely insane, she's going to be a menace, I cannot wait to play with her and see just exactly how crazy she is. And of course you can charge up her normal attacks, something that the developers forgot to mention up until that point. And actually, you can charge up any attack in the middle of the combo, so be sure to keep that in mind as you play with Twayan. But now that you have seen how these characters are going to play out, how exactly do you unlock them and get to play with them? Well, we're going to be getting some brand new special crewmate cards that are needed to unlock Sofon or Twayan. And you'll be able to purchase these from Sierra using Treasure Trade, with the items that you need to be able to get these tickets being the Supreme Weapon Essences. But in order to get said Supreme Weapon Essences, you'll need to complete a brand new quest that is being added in the new update. You see in version 1.2.0, we're getting brand new quests that are also going to feature brand new enemies. And here we get to see a small preview of how that mission is going to play out. You start off by defeating these enemies from a distance and even have the ability to use these turrets. And then at the end, you are greeted with this amazing boss. It kind of looks like Behemoth from Final Fantasy, it looks really, really cool, and I cannot wait to fight him. I mean, just look at all of those attacks. That is so cool. Additionally, by clearing these two new quests, you'll gain a brand new item called Revenant Medallion. And by collecting enough of these, you'll be able to trade them at the Knickknack Shack for the Supreme Weapon Essences, which you are going to need to trade to be able to acquire Twayan and Sofon. It should be noted that the quest is going to be an extreme quest and not a proud quest, and it is made to drop tons of valuable sigils, so it is likely a quest that you're going to be able to farm very easily to obtain some powerful sigils that you might still be missing. I think the idea here is not so much to add a quest that is difficult and challenging, but more so to add a quest that is going to be easy to deal with so that you can unlock the characters easily. That being said, the second quest where we fight off against that behemoth looking monster is going to be a proud quest. And that one is going to drop a lot of medallions and it even has the potential of dropping, as a very rare drop, the supreme weapon essence so that you can directly trade it at the knickknack shack. So if you are already geared up, you're going to be able to clear it very easily and get the new characters in an instant. Now the developers mentioned that these two characters are going to be very different in the way that they have fate episodes, as they're going to essentially be a continuation of the reeling story. As you can see right here, we even get to see Sofon in the airship and Id with Twayan, so it is very much going to be tied to the plot of the original game. 
And now we get to the unique sigils for both Twayan and Sophon, and man, I'm very excited for all of this. And they are actually releasing not two, but four unique sigils for each of these characters. So let us start with Sophon. The Sigil Spirit Edge Rally is going to boost your Sword Shine level whenever Sophon activates a skill while an avatar is summoned, so that is likely going to allow you to deal more damage. With the Spirit Edge's Fury, you'll be able to boost your attack power, stun power and damage cap as long as the avatar is summoned, something very similar to Catalina. And raising damage cap always sounds very powerful, so I am excited about that one in particular. Seven Star Boundary is going to set the max HP to 45,000 in exchange for a boost to attack power and damage cap, and that one sounds very nutty considering that you always want to have your max HP at 45,000 for the Terminus weapon. So if you are planning on getting the Terminus weapon, that is not even going to be a drawback, you're just going to be boosting your attack and damage cap. <laughs> And the final sigil for Sophon is going to be the Spirit Edge Warpath, which is going to grant temporary buff to Sophon whenever he and the Avatar land a combo finisher together. So basically as long as you land a combo finisher while the Avatar is summoned. We don't exactly know what the temporary buffs are going to be, so this sigil doesn't sound very good, especially not when compared to the damage cap sigils. <laughs> That being said, as for Twayan's sigils, the first one is called Dark Huntress Volley and is going to grant enhanced damage and a chance to gain supplementary damage when using the fully charged multi-lock hail at max level, so that is the big attack that charges up after you get to the max level and can hit multiple enemies. Enhanced damage already sounds very nice, but being able to gain supplementary damage, now that sounds incredible because that is going to stack with the supplementary damage that you already get from the sigils. <laughs> Now her next signature sigil is going to be the Dark Huntress Surge, which is going to boost the rate of fire for Twain's normal attacks and her movement speed when shooting her bow. She already looks like a very agile character that can shoot very fast. I'm not quite sure if this is going to be all that good ultimately, because a lot of characters in this game tend to use their skills to deal more damage rather than the normal attacks, but then again Twayan is the type of character that is going to use the normal attacks to level up her Ultra Sight Gauge, so this might actually be a good sigil. She then gets the 2 crown boundary which is essentially the same thing as the Sophon Sigil, setting the max HP cap to 45,000 in an exchange for a boost to attack power and damage cap. Pretty crazy that you can get damage cap for free like that, these two characters sound absolutely broken. And the final sigil is going to be the Dark Huntress Warpath, which is going to make it so that charged attacks do more damage and have more stun power. And they will also have a chance to inflict a random debuff, and given that Poison, Burn, Paralysis and even Freeze are all considered debuffs, if you can randomly get those debuffs from doing charged attacks, that is going to be absolutely insane. <laughs> Additionally, we also saw the reveal of some brand new sigils that are also going to be added in 1.2.0, those being Cradmoration, which is going to increase your HP based on how many crabs you have rescued, Reuter Aegis, which is going to greatly raise your maximum HP in proportion to your current max HP, and Auto Potion, which is going to automatically use a potion whenever your HP drops below a certain threshold, and will also increase the stock of all recovery items by one. But the cool thing here is that they go on to say that 19 brand new 
character unique sigils are going to be added to the game. So essentially, all the characters that exist in Granblue Fantasy Relink are getting a brand new unique sigil. We don't know exactly what that is going to be, if I were a betting man I would say that it's going to be the same thing as this one right here, setting your max HP to 45,000 in exchange for a boost to attack and damage cap, as that sounds like one of the easiest sigils to implement across all of the characters. But if they go out of their way to make a unique sigil for all the characters in the game, that would be really cool. That being said, the developers do mention that if they were to go into detail about each unique sigil, they would be here for a long time, so that sounds like they're actually going to be unique for each different character, which is fantastic. And just as many players requested, they're going to be adding a transmutation update for your sigils, allowing you to transmutate those sigils in bulk. And as you can see right here, they simply go up to zero and they can choose up to 30 sigils and just like that, they're able to receive all of them at once. Lord knows having this from day one would have been amazing, but it's great that they're adding it at least. Apparently it was a feature that they were only expecting to add in update 1.3.0, but because so many people requested it, they ended up adding it in this update. There's also been a character balance patch, which I'm going to cover in a different video to not make this one super long, so expect that one very soon. There's going to be a new emote expansion set, and here you get to see them in detail with Sofon doing push-ups, Jita doing squats, and Armai doing setups. I wonder why they picked this character for this emote. And apparently these emotes are going to be different depending on the character that you select, so it's going to be a funny thing to try out with the different characters. We're also getting a brand new color pack for each of the different characters, and here you get to see Siegfried, Jita and the Captain all three at once. I personally don't like the way these outfits look too much, I'm not a huge fan of the monochrome style, and I think they look way too shiny with the golden color, but hey that is an additional color so I'm sure that there's someone out there that is going to enjoy it. They are going to allow you to unlock your crewmate in an instant, you won't have to do those quests to be able to get Sofon and Twayen, and you will also get some upgrade items along the way as microtransactions. And then we get to the version 1.3.0 update news, with some actual Sandal Fun gameplay. And man am I excited for this one, I love the way that this character looks, and Lucilius is my main in the fighting game, so being able to play with Sandalphon is going to be the closest thing that I'm going to have to be able to play as Lucilius in this game. And if you haven't seen him in action, his moveset looks so crazy over the top it's actually insane. So as you can see Sandalphon starts off in base form like that, no wings or any special particle effects, and he's actually going to be one of those characters that you need to perfectly time his attacks to be able to fill up his gauge. That gauge is going to be called the Archangel Gauge, and I bet you already know what's going to happen once he fills it up. And also by pressing the triangle button, you're able to perform a sidestep that is similar to Lancelot's Twin Blade Dance, and that is going to give you invulnerability frames, so that is going to be a huge tool for Sandalphon, that is one of the best things that Lancelot has going for him, and it's the whole reason why me and so many players were able to instantly clear Lucilius without taking damage, so that is going to be a big thing. And of course, by performing link attacks, you'll be able to fill up the gauge as well, and if you hold the triangle button, you're actually able to manually fill it up. And now that the gauge is filled up, if you press the triangle button again, Sandalphon will turn into his Primark form. And that is where he gets the wings, his attacks become a lot flashier, he deals a lot more damage, hits the enemies a lot more times, and now he has this crazy gauge as well. I mean, just look at the way he looks. And even his skills become transformed and become these crazy over the top spectacles whenever he is in his Primark form, and as we speculated he's going to have a supportive skill, and some utility in the form of CC like we saw right there with that boulder, but I mean this character looks absolutely crazy. And also a lot of these animations where he is flying up in the air and he is flashing white, I do believe that he is going to be invulnerable during those times, so that is going to be a way for you to deal damage and also avoid taking damage at the same time, which is also very powerful in this game. This is by far the character that I'm the most interested in, both visually and mechanically from everything that I have seen, and here they go on to showcase the different skills with Breath of Life being this AoE heal, like so that will be able to heal you and also cleanse you and your allies, and No Way Out being that gap closer that is going to allow you to follow up into your normal combo, and of course all of these skills are going to have enhanced versions once he gets into the Primark state. And Power of 1 is going to be this buff that is going to raise your attack, defense and critical hit rate for yourself and all of your party members, so that is always nice. Just look at how flashy he is, even in his base form. 
And just like with it, Sindalfon is going to have different Skybound arts depending on whether he is in his base form or in the Supreme Primarch state. But sadly, they're not going to be showcasing his Skybound art in the Primarch state, but this is what it looks like if you perform it in base form. It still looks incredible in my opinion. Look at that angle with the hands, that is fantastic. And of course, they go on to tease that Sandalphon's Skybound art in the Primarch state is going to be the iconic Paradise Lost. We're going to be unlocking Sandalphon in much the same way that we're going to be unlocking Sophon and Twayan. We're going to have a new method to unlock him, and he is going to have his own weapons, his own fate episodes, everything like that. And if you choose to, you'll be able to play through the story and have him as the main character from the start. And now we get to talk about some cool features that they're adding to the game that are actually some very good quality of life features, such as this overlay map a la Diablo style that is even going to point out where you can find different pickable items, as well as chests and any objectives that are in the area. I would have loved to have this from the very start of the game because finding my way through some of these areas was not the easiest thing ever sometimes, but it's cool that they're adding it to the game. And they even go on to mention that you'll be able to find the different crabs on the map with this feature. The game will actually tell you where they are, you don't need to look up a YouTube video just for that. That being said, they're only going to be pointed out to you in the map. If you are playing through the story normally, the game is not going to tell you where they are, which sounds reasonable in my opinion. And a very cool feature that I would have loved to see from day one is going to be this cool photo mode that is going to even allow you to change the different poses of the characters, add a bunch of different filters on top, and as someone that makes YouTube videos, I would have loved to have this to make my thumbnails a lot easier to make. Again, it's pretty cool that they're adding all of this stuff, and really goes to show just how much the developers love this game in the community. Now, there is this weird thing that they're adding into the game, which is more on the goofy side as opposed to quality of life. They're quite simply going to allow you to still pick up crabs even if you have collected all of them by talking to an NPC just so that you can hear the character's specific voice line whenever they pick up one of the crabs. Now, a very cool feature that I requested pretty much since the game released was the addition of a butterfly indicator for Narmaya, because sometimes you simply would not be able to see how many of them you had, so this is a very nice quality of life change. The developers go on to mention that the next update 1.3.0 where Sandalphon is going to be released is essentially going to be the finale of Granblue Fantasy Relink updates. It's kinda sad that we may not see more updates after that, but I've been absolutely loving this game, I've been waiting for it since 2018, and it has surpassed all of my expectations, and it's so cool to see us getting all of this content for free. If you guys want to know what exactly the patch notes are and how they are going to affect each of the different characters, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to be making a separate video covering all of the buffs and nerfs, so if you guys want to watch that, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And of course, I'll be making a separate build video for each of the different characters. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching, my name is Dark Hero, and as always, happy hunting!